Good morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Now, in order to, oh, first of all, is it my imagination or is that turning slower? <laughs> it's turning slower. We'll talk about that in a moment. However, in order to finish step 20, we got to get our life rafts painted. So that means that I'm going to have to get the spray booth back up on the table here and get my little plastic sheet down and we've got we've got most of the parts like the uh these uh, optical units or whatever they were they're they're done uh the uh the 20 millimeter guns here they're they're painted and ready to go on i think we need uh two four six i think we need about six of those and oh and and the uh where here they are the ammunition boxes, they're all painted and ready to go, but the life rafts aren't. Uh, now, I know that yesterday I had said that I was not going to video working on this thing, but I did, just a little bit. And so, uh, yeah, I did that last, last night at the model table here, so... Uh, now, I know that it's uh, tomorrow was actually Rodney Day, but I want to use this cup. I mean, Jeff went to all the work of uh, making it interesting here, so uh, let's roll back. Okay, I know that I had said that I wasn't going to do any videoing when I was messing around with this, but I just thought you'd like to see what I've discovered here. And that is that if I increase the voltage... Okay, there we go. We got 1.4 volts. Okay, all it takes is 1.25 roughly volts. If we increase it to uh, one and a half volts, which is what one of those batteries is, it's probably just about right. Now, I haven't, I haven't tried one of these batteries yet. Um, I know that it looks like I did because I broke the the back out, but I actually I didn't. So let's, let's just, for the fun of it, we'll, we'll uh, try one and, and see what happens here. Now, here we go. Yeah. All right. So I, I know that it's going to work with one and a half volts. In all likelihood, it's going to take quite a while to drain one of these batteries down. I'm going to uh, see if I can't mount this battery holder in the bottom here somehow and uh, incorporate this old switch. Yeah. You know, I think this used to be an ignition switch in an old car that I had. The uh, the the switch in the in the uh, key the key switch you know like on the uh, steering column and it burned out and I, I rigged up uh, anyway <laughs> yeah nobody knew how to start that car except me well probably a car thief could anyway let's let's uh, see what we can do here okay here's what's happened. We have gone from 33 and a third, at least I'm assuming that's what it was, I never did actually check it, to 19 and a half. I checked it twice. But the best part is it's, it's uh, much more convenient now, you know. And I imagine as the battery runs down it will go slower. Now I, I wish it was a little slower. I'd like around 10 would be just about right, but this is going to be okay for spring. Yeah, it's better than it was. A lot better. Okay. I was going to say let's continue on, but I think I pretty well had it here for tonight, so... I just have to remember to turn it off. Otherwise it, you know, 
I don't know how long the battery would last, maybe five hours. I'm, I'm just guessing. These little uh, uh, motors don't take very much power. Okay, you know what? I should have uh, measured it when I had the uh, power supply hooked up. But, oh well, it is what it is. Now, while I'm sitting here editing and listening to myself saying that I can't check this out anymore, I realize, yes, I can. I just run the video back and, you know, see what it said. It's, there it is. Now, as it turns out, it's drawing such little uh, amperage that it won't even register on the watts. I think you have to have at least a tenth of a watt before it will register. Uh, but anyway, we can do the math. So if we go uh, 1.5 volts times 0 0.025 amps, it works out to 0 0.0375 watts. Now that's not very much. Uh, well, it's enough to eventually run down one of those little batteries, but it's not very much. Yeah, what is that, 375 hundredths of a watt? <laughs> yeah, not very much. Okay, here's what's happening. First of all, I don't like hats. Messes up my hair, both of them. <laughs> okay. We got our pressure set to about 12 pounds. I think I'm ready to go here. I think when I move the camera in and zoom in on this little part, it's going to be in focus. Uh, no promises. Seems to me I screwed it up a couple of times ago. Uh, I've uh, just shaken up my 66 here and uh, hopefully everything's going to be good to go. I hope. I think it's it sounded like it was about the right viscosity. It looks pretty thin. Oh, you know what? This this uh this thing is cracked. Yeah, it doesn't want to doesn't want to hold its vacuum. Speaking of vacuum, we got to talk about my vacuum chamber. Got a problem with it. Some of you, if you've been watching my woodworking videos from way back, will know what that problem is. Anyway, and it also has to do with cracks. <laughs> uh, let's get something different going on here. Oh no, I got paint on the carpet. Let's try this one. Yeah, this one seems to be working better. I don't know, maybe that should be thinned a little bit more. Alright, let's try and get it in the garbage can this time. There we go. Now, I'm going to try and have my, the last time I did this, I had the airbrush right in like this so that the nozzle could be seen in the, in the field of view. That was a mistake. I should have had it back a ways. And uh, th that's what we will do here now. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> I got the microphone on and uh, I, let me just check my, my recording level here. Uh, oh yeah, we got modulation going on. So, so you got to be hearing me. You're just going to be hearing me differently. And the idea is that when I turn on the fan, okay, now I should still be able to talk normal, and uh, the fan is not going to overpower my voice. That's the whole idea of this. Uh, I know the quality isn't as good as the camera, but uh, anyway, let's uh, get going here. And uh, I don't see any reason why we can't uh, get this going. And I'm going to try and swing you around and zoom you in.
Okay, checking the monitor, that still seems to be in focus, so that's good. Now I can just concentrate on, on spraying here. Uh, I'm just going to test this out. Yeah, we got volume going on, and let's not flood it to death, okay? I thought that went a little bit heavy, didn't I? Yeah, that one's a little bit heavy. the last one. Oh, I see some sprue on the uh, on the end there that I missed. Yeah, I kind of missed that, didn't I? Well, it's too late now. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and get everything cleaned up here and uh, after it's all dry then we'll have a nice close look and here's hoping that uh, my voice is nice and clear. Now as for our sunrise this morning. Well, once again, nothing special, just nice. We'll speed up the first part and we'll watch the last part with our walkers at regular speed. Now, at least two or three viewers have mentioned something to the effect of you should go over there and let those guys know, or girls know, that, uh, you know, they're being seen all around the world. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that we should uh, just let them sort of have their privacy. I know that I could also zoom in a little closer and at least we could tell uh, is it a man and a woman or is it two women or is it two men or what? <laughs> but you know what? Let's just sort of stay back a little bit and give them a little bit of privacy. Um, yeah, and we can still enjoy watching them come and go. They were a little bit earlier this morning, about seven minutes earlier. So I guess they don't have a schedule like I thought maybe they did. Anyway, well, seven minutes the same time every day, that's, that's kind of a schedule, I guess, isn't it? Okay, if you remember I said something to the effect of if we deal with our sprue pen a little bit every day, it won't be so monumental. Anyway, this is the vacuum chamber. And I was talking earlier about, uh, you know, cracks. Now this is what happened. The 
I guess the last uh, probably three or four times that I used this, I was noticing that I could see when I was looking down through it, and by the way, this is just a, a real thick piece of acrylic glass. Uh, I could see what looked like little little cracks forming on on the underside here and, and penetrating up into the uh, it looked to me like about oh going as far as maybe two or three millimeters at least that's what it looked like and there, there was like hundreds of them sort of honeycombed all all over the place well I was envisioning this thing imploding because it's uh, it's under vacuum imploding and this the uh, the pieces go you know you're going to say well if it if it implodes that that wouldn't be too bad except that you got to remember that that on the inside here i've got my my stuff right okay not only that but when all the parts hit the bottom of the uh, of the uh, of the pot and they're going to do it violently they're going to want to ricochet back out and usually i have the camera looking down into the pot so that you could see what was going on. And not only that, uh, you know, it, it might be kind of hard on the eyes, right? So uh, I, was, I was getting to the place where I was, I was, I was scared to use it. And uh, uh, yeah, so anyway, I, I went online just uh, yesterday it was, and uh, I found that he, there's another outfit that that sells these things, and it has it's made. They use tempered glass instead of acrylic, and they say that it's bulletproof. <laughs> uh, another thing about the acrylic top, if you get the if you get the the acrylic the the, uh, the liquid acrylic splashes up on it, and it does. There's a, a few little places here that you know. Well, you can't you can't uh, use a solvent to get that off because this is also acrylic. So you're gonna, you know, make a mess of it. Whereas glass, it should be easier to clean. So my, my first thought was, well, I have, a, I have some acrylic downstairs and I could cut a sheet about this, this size and I could glue it to the bottom of this. But then I gotta start messing around, finding a, a, a glue or a solvent that will glue two pieces of acrylic together and uh and and what about the rubber seal you know and i'm thinking then i gotta try and make something up out of maybe like uh, uh silicone uh oven cookware you know that kind of stuff and i thought i may as well just buy one uh, you know I'll you know buy a replacement already well as luck would have it amazon had one on sale exactly what i'm looking for with the tempered glass instead of acrylic now, I think it is a little bit smaller, but that's okay. We don't need something this big uh, for, for, uh, to make a sprue pen or even uh, any, any other kind of wood stabilizing I choose to do. Uh, it's not like I'm gonna be trying to do a, ta a, a big table or anything like that. So uh, anyway, it's, it's probably gonna be here in about a week or so. Uh, so, so that's the update on the sprue pen for today. <laughs> okay, maybe I should have an update on the update here. And that is that when I first realized that there could be a potential problem with this thing, I went online to see if anybody had, uh, you know, reported where one of these acrylic tops had imploded into the vacuum chamber. And I couldn't find anything. I uh, I tried to email Provac at that time. They were still in business. I do believe they were in uh, New York City at that time. I don't know if they're in business anymore, at least not under that name. Uh, I did email them. I, I remember that I did not receive any kind of a response back, So, uh, which is understandable. I mean, if you're a big company and somebody's going to... Uh, is reporting something to you that you could possibly be sued over, they're going to pretend like they don't know anything about it, right? So I wasn't surprised that I didn't get an email back, but I thought I'd ask anyway and uh, and see. But uh, but like like I mentioned that on 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 the underside here, the the little I guess you'd call them fissures or whatever they had 
Like, I, I believe they went in probably about two millimeter. I don't know, maybe I should see if I can uh, uh, somehow find a safe way that, that I, or at least that I feel safe. It, it could be that nothing will ever happen. It could be that, 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 that that's just the way it is. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can if I can actually uh, video those little cracks. I think I think I did show them in one of my pen turning episodes, but I can't remember anymore. Uh, but that'll have to be for another day. Okay, now I'd like to slip on my macro lens and have that nice close look I was talking about, but I don't think that this uh, paint has. Uh, shrunk as much as it can. I think it can go just a little bit further yet. So we'll have to do that in the next episode. In the meantime, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.